Tato. That is the mihi of the manu, the call of the seabirds. So growing up in suburban Auckland in the 1980s, I didn't really think much was special about my upbringing, except that my mother bred parakeets, including kakariki. Kakariki are one of our small native parakeets, and they're really charismatic and can have up to nine chicks in a single nest. But they're also only found in the remote backcountry of New Zealand now on our remote offshore islands. So I wanted to understand what was making the bird species of New Zealand decline. Birds mean something special to everyone, something different. But to me, they represent what's special about growing up in New Zealand and growing up on the other side of the world, being a little bit different, a little bit unique. So I want to ask you all, who here has seen a rat like this in the last year? Put up your hand. So as I travelled around New Zealand, seeing these birds on different islands, I came to realise that New Zealand's birds were unique and they were only found in New Zealand. Many of them were disappearing at an astonishing rate and some of them had already gone extinct forever. So I wanted to understand what was the cause of that decline. And in New Zealand, the answer is clear. It's rats like this and other introduced predators that humans brought to New Zealand. So what you have to understand is New Zealand is an island nation. It's not like Europe, and it's not like North America. It's not like those continents where animals can travel freely. Like the brave Polynesian voyagers that first came to New Zealand, they had to get here on their own steam, like the plants and animals before them. And so if you had four legs and fur, New Zealand was off limits to you. You couldn't swim here. But that all changed. That all changed when humans arrived and introduced their plants and animals with them. And the birds were not at all prepared for this onslaught. And this has actually been going on even recently. Only 50 years ago, rats were still arriving on islands in New Zealand they'd never been to. Big South Cape Island is an island off the southern tip of Stewart Island. And in the 1960s, a fishing boat from the South Island moored off its coast one night. And the rats on board that ship jumped ship, swam ashore, and they overran that island. Within three years, two species of bird and a species of bat were extinct. Gone forever. We just couldn't carry on like this. But New Zealanders are not ones to sit back and let bad things happen. If the problem is rats on islands, then with our can-do attitudes, we can just fix this. The solution is just to get rid of the rats on islands. And that's exactly what we did. It turns out it just takes a little bit of rat poison, or sometimes a lot of rat poison. But for the last 50 years, we have been systematically eradicating rats from the islands around New Zealand. In fact, the first rat eradication using helicopters was done on Whale Island, just off the coast in the Bay of Plenty here. And now, over the last 50 years, we've eradicated rats from a third of New Zealand's offshore islands, which is really fantastic. However, some of us sat back and thought, is that really enough? Is it fair to relegate our birds and exile them to the most remote offshore islands of New Zealand? Why couldn't we have kiwi in our backyards, takahe mowing our lawns, kākāpō digging up our gardens? And so, why couldn't we just continue eradicating rats from more and more islands until we do the largest islands in New Zealand, the North and the South Island? And so the idea of a predator-free New Zealand was born the idea of let's just eradicate all of the rats, all of the possums and all of the stoats from all of New Zealand. Do it once, do it well, do it forever. No more having to worry about rats spreading disease, no more having to worry about possums spreading bovine tuberculosis, no more 25 million birds being killed a year by these introduced predators, and no more having to use poison every year to control them. That's what a predator-free New Zealand is. So I want to emphasize that predator-free New Zealand is a social movement. It's been described as our moonshot. It's something everyone can be a part of, and it doesn't belong to any single one group. The Department of Conservation and Predator-Free 2050 Limited play their part for the government. People like us can play our role through the community and through working with local councils. We all have a role to play. And importantly, it's not because these animals aren't from here that we want to get rid of them, it's just because of the exceedingly high amounts of damage they cause. As I said earlier, 25 million birds a year are being killed by these predators in New Zealand. 
The other thing I want to emphasize is we're not starting from scratch here. We're actually a lot further along than you might think. Currently, 50% of the New Zealand mainland, the North and the South Island, is under some form of predator control thanks to the combined works of the Department of Conservation, farmers, private landowners, community groups and iwi. Everyone doing their part means we've actually got quite a lot of pest control going on already. All we have to do is get better at filling in the gaps, linking up these groups, tracking down the last rats and stoats and possums where they're hiding, and making sure no more of them are jumping off ship onto our mainlands. The other thing I want to talk about is the cost. You might be thinking, oh my God, how much would this cost? And the answer is, it would cost a lot of money. It will likely run into billions of dollars. But I want to emphasize that that's actually only a tiny percent of our GDP, one or two percent of our GDP every year is all we might have to commit to this. And in fact, we already spend a billion dollars a year on pest control. The only difference is, by spending it on control, we spend that billion dollars every year and are committed to doing that in perpetuity. But if we do it for an eradication, it may cost more up front, but we only have to pay it once, and then we never have to pay it again. But I also want to talk about the ethics of a predator-free New Zealand. A lot of you might be thinking, how does it make sense to kill for conservation? Isn't that the opposite of what we should be doing? But I want you to realize, I don't think that's the right question to be asking. The killing has already been going on. It's been happening since the rats and the stoats first arrived in New Zealand. What we've got to do is choose who dies and how humanely. Whether we do something or do nothing, something is going to die. So it's really on us as an environmental responsibility to decide which animals die and how humanely that is. And for me, it's about the environmental justice of returning this country back to its original bird inhabitants. The other thing we actually see is that this is a common conundrum in conservation. It's the conflict between animal ethics and environmental ethics. And if we could somehow find a way to remove all the pests and save the environment without having to kill any of them, it would be a bit of a holy grail for conservation. And that's where the science comes into it. Science, perhaps through genetic technologies, might find a way that we could gene edit something such as infertility through a pest population. So that pest population would harmlessly go extinct without having to kill any animals. And I think that would be really fantastic if that was possible. But there's a few points I want to make. First of all, I want to emphasize that none of this research is happening in New Zealand at this time, for good reason. We have a, a, a remarkable hesitancy towards genetic engineering. And second of all, overseas, it's still only theoretical and happening inside laboratories. And I also want to raise the other philosophical issues about this as do we actually have a right to interfere with nature or not? These are all important questions we have to ask, but as a scientist, I want us to collect all those evidence and all those facts so that we can make the correct decision if we have the opportunity to use this. But either way, it might not be a silver bullet. Eradicating rats is really hard, and, but that hard work really pays off. And I want to talk to you about some stories today of how fantastic it is. So for the last few years, I've been working with the Department of Conservation on their million-dollar mouse eradication program in the New Zealand sub-Antarctic. On Antipodes Island, mice shipwrecked on that island at the start of the 20th century, and they spread across that island, eating their way through the ecosystem, eating their way through the kākāriki on that island. There were over 200,000 mice on that island by the time I arrived, which meant it cost about $5 a mouse for a million-dollar mouse eradication and there were over 100 mice per hectare. There was nowhere on Antipodes Island you couldn't stand where you wouldn't be more than five metres from another mouse. So when the Department of Conservation confirmed in 2018 last year that they had successfully eradicated mice from Antipodes Island, I found that hugely personally satisfying. So now, buoyed by that success, we're now looking at Auckland Island, the last island in the New Zealand subantarctic region to have invasive pests on it. And this is a huge step up in scale. Auckland Island is twice the size of Great Barrier Island and has closer to five million mice on it. But we think it's possible, we've done the studies, and we're going to move forward with trying to eradicate the mice from this island using poison from helicopters. So what are the results of these eradications? Well, they are fantastic. 
the birds explode in numbers. If you're not lucky enough, like the mice, to be able to hitchhike a ride to the subantarctic islands, you can visit some of the islands closer to home. Tiri Tiri Matangi and Kapiti Island are some of our original bird sanctuaries. Or on the mainland, you can visit Zealandia and Mangatauteri. In Whangarei, people already have kiwis on their back porches coming into their houses, and in Auckland, people have kokako flying past their windowsills. Predator Free New Zealand isn't a pipe dream for the future. It's something that's already happening today and something that's sweeping across New Zealand and changing the way we interact with biodiversity. I ask you to share my vision for a Predator Free New Zealand. Do you want to hear the bird song ring out once again? Is this the kind of country you would want to live in or the kind of country you would want your kids or your grandkids to live in? I know it is for me, and so if it is for you, I ask you to do your bit and just look after your own backyard. And I actually mean that literally. Set a rat trap in your own backyard and do you, your bit to make predator-free New Zealand. Thank you.